evil. Our study of evil. We're on page 23 of 60 of 54 pages. And for the study of evil, I've got to put this foot footnote in. You gotta get all these lessons. You this can't be a nitpick because evil can be sin and the consequences. Evil may not be a sin and the consequences. Evil may be for an innocent person to have someone else's consequences of sin. And we said before that we quoted often in Job and Lamentations and Isaiah, God said, I create evil. And it's not a sin. Not all evil is sin. But there's consequences of evil. That's why we're doing this study. And right now we're up to the eighth part of our study. And we're going to look at sections 6 through 10. And we've got 18 under evil, the judgment of God. Now, 54 pages of evil. And you can go to our website and you can download and print this free of charge. It's not copyrighted. It's for your edification, reproof, and for God to work in your life. Now, what you do with it between you and God, I've done it for a study for us to know and learn and grow more in the Lord. And if you're to download it and print it out or you just look at it on the screen, you'll see, you know, there's space in between each line. Now, we're not studying every place of evil in the Bible like we did the full. But we did the full study, and that too is going to be on our website. We did every time full, foolish, bold, fault. I don't think we did fault. Evil, I, I nitpicked and I chose out the best. And doing that, we have 54 pages. We have 23 categories. We did several several lessons on the introduction. We did an adjective, bad deed, criminal and, and capital punishment. Good is evil and evil is good. And that's this generation now. Good versus evil. The heart. Innocent and innocence. Now we're in the judgment of God. We're going to be doing, Lord willing, knowledge, misery, pain, and suffering, protection, rebellion, religion, repentance, sexual, sin, sowing and reaping, spirit, stealing or theft, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, unwell, a verb. We did adjective, we're going to do the verb. And then we have a warning. So on the judgment of God, evil, 2 Samuel 24, 16. And I'm going to, you got to get this off. You, this is one you can't, and I'm not, listen, I'm not saying, get all what Stiley Hayward's doing and all his work there. No. Santa Claus one, you, you can get what you need to get out of that. And maybe the, uh, others are not interested. Uh, Tamus, get what you want out of it. You know, I mean, it'd be great you get them all. Our wet cloth series, you may not be interested in it on all, but maybe some. Well, this one is complete. 2 Samuel 24, 16. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented from the, from, the Lord repented him of the evil. He said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord was at by the threshing place of Anna, the Jebusite. Now see there is God doing evil through, through the angel of the Lord. Now is it sin? No. What was he doing? He was killing Israelites. They had sinned against God. And the fact is that when there are masses of people being destroyed by a phenomenon, it 
could be possibly the judgment of God, which is evil, a consequence. The nation of people sinning, not getting right, not repenting. I don't think I'm just saying America. I'm saying worldwide. I mean, there has been worldwide weather phenomenon. There has been crisis phenomenon. There has been famine phenomenon. Listen, when you go through the book of Exodus, all those plagues and all those signs that God did to Pharaoh is for one reason. Pharaoh would not let the children of Israel go. And that was an evil. So we have a judgment upon a city, and here Jerusalem, God's city, for the sins of the people of that city. When a man or a city or nation has sinned against God, the reaction of judgment, whether it be, whether it may be, or how harsh or how lenient it may be, the evil is God chastening the sin. And you would check out Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4 through 17 on your own. It's a butt whip whipping time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And you're not paying attention. You're not reverencing. You're not believing on Jesus. You're not putting your faith and trust on Jesus. God's going to turn the thumb screws up. And he's going to provoke judgment. Not that you get angry. Not that you rebel against God. But that you would turn to God. And it's sad that many still go the broad way. It is sad that even in the tribulation period, it says that they will curse and, and take their fist up to God in anger. And it is amazement after the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, a thousand years, that the devil is set loose for a season and he still gathers an army to go against Jesus and the nation of Israel and the saints. The evil is the chastening of God for evil on his people which have done sin. Now listen, people. If God is has and is going to Jacob's trouble, if he's going to judge his people Israel, and he has and he will, and if he has judged and chastised his children under the blood of Jesus Christ, he has and he will, don't you think, as you are rebelling against Jesus, rebelling against the Word of God, don't think you're going to be scot-free. Now, nations as America and England and China, you better realize that God destroyed Judah in the time of Jeremiah for their sin. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah in the neighboring city for their sin. If God doesn't destroy for you your cities and your areas, for not repenting to Christ and not getting right with Christ, if God does not destroy you, he's going to have to apologize to Psalm Gomorrah. He's going to have to apologize to Judah. And God does not apologize for judgment upon your sin. Is the cup hasn't come to the fullness yet. 1 Kings 14.10 Now is the time to get right. You realize it is evil of hell? Hell is evil. Hell is the consequence right now today in the church age. The rapture hasn't happened. We are on this side of Calvary. If you reject Jesus Christ a sin, your judgment and your evil is you will go to hell. And you'll spend all eternity in hell and you'll be cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. That's an evil that God doesn't want. God's not willing that any should suffer. 1 Kings 14.10 Therefore behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam. And I will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisses against the wall. I'm not ashamed to say that word. Don't not say words like that, people. It's a Bible word. I hear tons of words that are not Bible words. 
So the Bible is inspired by God. It is inerrant, without error, without fail. It is the word of God, but we can't say certain words. It's a lot better than Kenneth Taylor's uh, Living Bible with the SOB. I have no problem with Jeroboam that pisses against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And I will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam as a man taken away dung until it be all gone. Now we saw a judgment upon Jerusalem, a city in 2 Samuel 24. We see judgment upon a house or a family. For the evil and wicked they do. And it says, I will bring evil. I am going to bring destruction. I am going to bring judgment upon Jeroboam and his house because of their sin. Say, Stiley, spell it out. Somebody smokes marijuana. They get high off marijuana. That's a sin. They go to the doctor, they find out their brain's been fried. They have deteriorated their body from marijuana smoking. I've seen it. The sin is smoking marijuana. The evil consequence is what you do to your health. You got a double evil there. You got the evil as the sin and you got the evil as the consequence. Smoke cigarettes. That's a sin and it's an evil. What is the what is the the evil, the consequence? Lung cancer, emphysema, you're gonna have to have oxygen, death, early death. All right. A man goes out and gets drunk. A sin. He gets behind the wheel of a car, drunk, a sin. He nails a car, someone coming home or going to work who is not intoxicated, not drank. They're just going somewhere. Hits that car and causes lifelong injuries. That person is getting evil. Consequences of that man's sin, they didn't sin. And we can go woo, all around. That's why we're doing this whole thing with evil. When God says evil, I mean, if you go over, <coughs> excuse me, allergies are bad. When you go over to God saying Isaiah 40, 45, 7, I form the light. I create darkness. I make peace. I create evil. That's one of the verses why we're doing this thing. God didn't create sin. The devil did. God did not create a hospital. Adam and Eve taking part of the fruit that they weren't supposed to, disobeying God's word, brought the hospital. Evil can be a sin and evil is consequences. Whether you sinned or you didn't sin. I know a place right now in my hometown, there are people who are suffering from radiation because of nuclear power plants and nuclear facilities and nuclear productions of, of submarines. All they did was buy a house, move in, and they didn't have any idea. Now, they didn't sin. There's no sin in buying a house. But where I come from, the cancer rate is phenomenal. Because it's the environment of all that is the history of industry that's been there. Now, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Oh, they didn't deserve that. It's the consequence that we are all sinners. Why is this happening to me? Because we're a sinner. I didn't sin bad. Break one sin? I, I, I heard the perfect illustration the other day. I love this. I hope I remember it. Take a plane, a pane of glass and write on it the Ten Commandments out of the King James Bible. Take a rock and throw it at one of those commandments. And what happens? You shatter them all. So 
So we have a judgment upon a city, 2 Samuel. We have a judgment upon a man and his family, 1 Kings 14. Realize, father, husband, the ruler of your family. I am the man of the family. I am him. I am the king. And you can bring evil upon your family. I'll tell you the quickest way you can bring evil upon your family. You bring alcohol into your house. That's an evil. And your wife will suffer, and your children will suffer, your neighbors will suffer, your, your co-workers will suffer, your employer will suffer. I know. I know that for a living fact. I've got nightmares of the evil of alcohol. Bring another woman home into your house. I don't mean just how, bring her to a hotel room, bring her... Or wherever. That's an evil. That's going to destroy your family and destroy you. Plain and simple. Have more fun than, than the Bible. That's an evil. It's going to destroy you and your family. Remember, your family can suffer for you because all evil is not because, like the guy coming home drunk. He nails that woman who was, who was innocently in her car going somewhere. Better pay attention. First Kings twenty one nineteen. See thou Ahab, oh boy, that's a king. Humble himself before me. Oh, look at that. See, even the wickedest man can get right. Have you read about Ahab? I've had two people I one I've known and one I heard about. I'm just too wicked. You know, God can't save us. Whatever you've done, look at Ahab. Because he humbled himself before me, God. I will not bring evil in his days. But his son's days will I bring evil upon his house. Now God has spared the judgment of the evil by repentance. Evil can be delayed or put off by mercy and grace of God. By a sinner repenting of his sin. Ahab was, was, was doing evil against God. You go read it. And God was turning up the heat. And he repented. He was sorry. And he got right with God. And God said, okay. I accept that. You're true to your heart. Now there's time. Listen, God may show his mercy. In the late 1990s, I was diagnosed with COPD, emphysema, and the doctor told me within six months I was going to die for smoking cigarettes. It's 2020. I've still got emphysema and I've still got breathing problems, but here I am. God's been merciful. And yet God left a little bit of that disease to remind me. A little bit of that evil is still in my lungs. Evil can be prevented. Evil can be put off. If you turn to God and repent of your heart. Once you see evil coming, don't go, well, it's me. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm just going to crawl underneath a rock. No, get out underneath that rock. Get down on your knees and say, Lord, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, that may not stop all the evil. And it may. You don't know what mercy and grace God will do for you. And then you don't know how much fleas God will leave on you to remind you you're a dog. You're a dog. First King, uh, excuse me, Second Kings twenty one twelve. So we had a city, we have a family, and we have a man that repented. Thus, therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel: Behold, I am bringing such an evil upon Jerusalem and Judah 
that whosoever hear that both his ears shall tingle. Whoa! That's the loving God. My God is love. My God would not hurt a fly. He visits the, the, the funeral of every sparrow and every dove. Oh. The astonishment of judgment or chastening of God and to behold the news will make the ears ring and tingle. Ring and tingle. You know, in other words, it is, you hear of something, you hear the destruction of a tornado. <gasps> now, I'll tell you what the wrong reaction is to that. Why would God allow that to happen? Sin. Why would God allow COVID-19 to go worldwide? Sin. Why is America breaking out with all the trouble? Pride and sin. Why is England such a trouble? Pride and sin and Muslim. Why are the third world countries so poor and a Catholic church sin and stupidity? Some of God's judgment is going to, you're not going to believe. what. Can you imagine what the world felt? The moment that that art door was shut with Noah and his family inside. Can you imagine for that moment, the first time it ever rained, rain, excuse me, it ever rained and they, it did not stop? Now remember, that is the first time rain has ever happened on the earth. These people... And it would not turn off and it would not shut down and they died. The entire world was over covered with rainwater. Now that was amazing. Last one for today. Second Kings twenty two sixteen. People are amazed of COVID-19, but they are not amazed of the God of COVID-19. People are amazed of a tornado, but they're not amazed of the power of the maker of the tornado. And yet they will blame God, but they won't give credit to God. The insurance company, it was an act of God. Why don't you put down in those forms, it was an act of God. Therefore, thus we should repent and get right with that God. Why don't you put that down in the paperwork? You're so quick to blame God. But you don't put down the answer. The preacher has the answer. Turn or burn or repent and get right. 2 Kings 22, 16. Thus save the Lord. I will bring evil upon this place. So see, there's God bringing evil, we've seen today. God brings evil. God brings the consequences of evil for people's sins upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah has read. It is written, when men defile the word of God, the Bible, what God has written against them is an evil they will get. In the church age, when a man rejects the word of God to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, his judgment and his chastening is hell. And there's no way of hell. And once you get into hell, you can't repent to get out of hell. You must repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ now. Chastening and judgment is to come by God by his written word. If you're unsaved and listen to me right now, you have heard the expression, the end times are coming. What is that expression? Everything right now is happening is what the Bible has told us it will happen. And the God in the Bible that you ignore, you mock, is to realize that's the same Bible that says, if you reject Jesus Christ, you're going to hell just as much as the world is unfolding to that day of the Antichrist. 
As much as the Bible pointed to the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, and he was, and he was born of a virgin, and he was, and foretold his life and his death and burial resurrection according to the scriptures, and it was. You better take heed to what the Bible says, and you better take heed to what God says. And you better get right with God according to God's terms and repent. Or there's an evil coming. And you know what an evil is for a Christian? And we're done. When he stands before the judgment seat of Christ, evil will be wood, hay, or stubble. He gets no reward. He gets no crown. He gets no well done. He gets no inheritance for wood, hay, or stubble. And too many Christians are going to have just that. Actually. They're evil for not giving heed to the word of God. Yea, they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yea, they was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. But they would not do what the Bible tells them to do. The evil is they go through heaven without a crown. Now, God is not going to give you a crown. To, well, I think everybody should have a crown in heaven. No, he ain't going to do that. If a person is walking in heaven with a crown, he earned that crown. If a person's walking around without a heaven, he didn't earn it. So there's evil for today. Evil upon a city. Evil upon a family. Evil... Where a man repented and God says, okay. And then an evil is going to make your ears tingle. And then an evil that comes according to the word of God. Many people at the great white throne judgment, they're not going to say, why are you throwing me into, into the lake of fire? They're going to know. Been enough preaching. Been enough teachings. 